Are no-name knockoff audio devices about to destroy big-name brands? Is Netflix about to rank programs based on popularity? Sort of like the modern TV guide. Will a conjoint effect take place with real-world events and mobile technology? We'll dig into these trending topics and more on the Business Management Podcast at the intersection of marketing, technology, media, and popular culture. It's called Disruptive FM. Roll the title. It's Disruptive it's FM. Disruptive it's FM. Disruptive it's FM. Disruptive FM. Welcome to Disruptive FM, where business and culture collide. Sponsored by Microsoft and Branding Strategy Insider, with your host, Jeffrey Colon. Okay, here we go. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Disruptive FM, episode 62. I'm Jeffrey Colon, head of brand studio for Microsoft Advertising. Thanks for tuning in. On the way, three trending topics to make sense of, and we'll also hear from Rick Farman, co-founder at Superfly. It's going to be awesome with a capital A. Let's dive in. Here are this week's trending topics. No names. For decades, if you were going to buy electronic devices, you probably invested in the brand names. Sony, Audio-Technica, Campfire, Bose, and Bowers and Wilkins. Shelling out for audio devices could set you back possibly $20,000 depending on the brand you invested in. Much of the high gear designed and sold by such U.S., Japanese, and European brands, you know, the sort of brands that now dominate the market, well, they're built, most of them, I should say, are built in China. But in the past few years, a wave of oddly named Chinese companies have begun to design and market their own audiophile grade equipment that can often outperform the better known, better marketed rivals and usually doing at a fraction of the price. And when we say fraction, we're talking about gear that may cost you $15. If there's a poster child for Chi-Fi, a moniker for this constellation of equipment that's largely made up of earphones, headphone amps, and high-resolution digital-to-analog audio converters, known as DACs, it's from a nearly anonymous brand known as KZ Acoustics, those earphones that extend slightly into the canal, like a hearing aid made so popular by Apple. Well, that all really started because of KZ Acoustics. They offer immensely spacious and dynamically charged listening experiences. Not the kind of praise you typically hear about gear that sells for around $15. So what does this mean for high-end audio brands? Not much for now. Big brands still dominate because they're big brands. Secondly, it's hard to find Chi-Fi. Most aren't readily available, and some are difficult to ship, depending where you are in the world. But if we think the likes of Sennheiser, Koss, and JVC will continue to dominate, and that Chinese audio might be shoddy and poorly constructed, we have to remember it's been only 40 years when we thought the same of Japanese audio imports. Over time, Japanese brands evolved from derivative to innovative, and are widely considered to produce some of the world's best high-end audio equipment. Many of these Chinese companies could be following a similar path. So while you don your head with Beats headphones, it's possible in a few years, you may not get odd looks when you're placing a pair of Bequez, UC, or Fiel headphones into your ears. Trending Topics on DFM Net Rank. I remember when the Friday newspaper came to my house. My favorite thing with it? A copy of the TV Guide. I would pour over that and figure out what was going to be on the TV that week. What I was going to watch. Even going as far as highlighting my selections. I knew what I was going to watch and when it would be on. All I needed was to simply wait for the right time to arrive, tune into the channel, turn it on, and lean back. But in a world where TV is no longer linear, WTF do we watch? Enter the net rank. 
Netflix has finally realized that what people watch may influence what others watch by including the most popular shows on a curated ranking list. The new feature on the streaming service will show its top 10 most popular programs and movies updated daily. Netflix has been testing the approach for about six months in Mexico and the United Kingdom before rolling out into other territories, including the United States. The company noted in a blog post that members in both pilot countries have found them useful. So we are now rolling them out to even more. The list should make it easier for viewers to pick what to watch. While Netflix's algorithm is supposed to make it easy for customers to find shows, the dizzying array of choices is too much for some viewers. Customers often spend long stretches of time just deciding which movie or show to try. And this is why I loved that TV guide. Not only did it tell you when a show was on and what channel, but it gave you a description too. We might think nonlinear TV is disruptive and cutting edge, but truly, we always go back to the familiarity of the past. NetRank is a step toward curated recommendations and less time trying to figure out what to watch and more time watching. Trending topics on DFM. The Conjoint Effect. On the last episode, episode 61, we spoke with Adrian Bellina of Jam 3 about experiential marketing. But what happens when we mix digital with experiences with um cannabis? Our next guest is all about innovating on the edge as live concert experiences intersect with your phone and intersect with leisure activities. In the past, one would queue up at a concert to buy beer, but is the near term all about lining up to buy cannabis? Rick Farman, co-founder of Superfly, is in charge of some of the top live experiences in the world, including Bonnaroo, Outside Lands, and Clusterfest. Rick was kind enough to join us on Microsoft Teams last week to talk about the emerging events space and why live events still matter. Let's take a listen. Yeah, so the experience industry, experience economy at large has grown over the last 15, 20 years in a direct parallel to how media has evolved. Really, in many ways, uh, started with the early internet and uh, was kind of boosted by the digital music phenomena. People having access to so many different types of music meant that there was a real desire to sort of experience that in a live format. That's why you've seen such a huge growth of festivals. And as social and mobile came on board, those kind of boosted those same sentiments. And what's interesting is that this experience economy has really flourished because of, in what I'm just saying there, and in spite of itself. The because of is that there's all this access to content and that there's a real you know, need to create content on an individual level. And so going out and experiencing things is such an opportunity to do that. The in spite of part is that you know, because people are spending so much of their time looking at screens and engaged in their digital lives, that there's natural human need to sort of put that down and connect more in the real world. So there's, there's you know, experiential opportunities provide value proposition for both sides of that. They provide the opportunity for people to create content and create digital currency. And at the same time, they create the opportunity to do that, you know, just for a moment and then put it away and, you know, be present and be engaging in the real world. At one point in time, the live event was merely imagined for what happened in front of you in real time. Now there's a before, during, and after that can be brought to life with mobile. Rick Farman, co-founder of Superfly. You are listening to Disruptive FM with Jeffrey Cologne. Now, here comes the music. 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 It's Disruptive FM, the culture of business. I'm Jeffrey Cologne. Thanks for being here. 
we would love to connect with you. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Disruptive FM. And you can connect with me personally on Twitter and Instagram at DJ GEO FFE. Big shout out to our sponsor partners, Microsoft Advertising, Intelligent Connections. Create smarter customer journeys in the era of customer-centric marketing. Learn more at MicrosoftAdvertising.ai. Branding Strategy Insider. Branding Strategy Insider serves 50,000 plus senior level marketers, CMOs, and business decision makers daily. It's distributed by partners such as the Washington Post, Wall Street Journal, Google News, and Forbes. Branding Strategy Insider is the leading resource for thought leadership, brand strategy, and brand management. Learn more at brandingstrategyinsider.com. And Iographer. Iographer creates accessories for your mobile device to help you make better videos. Their cases allow you to attach filmmaking accessories like microphones, tripods, and lenses to help you to stabilize your video and look like a pro. And they won't bust your budget either. We use them on a lot of our videos we make for Disruptive FM. Learn more at iographer.com. In the background, music from Afonso. It's a track called What You Won't. So chill at it. It's out now on Electric Friends Music. And now, DFM presents... Do you even read, bro? It's called reading. Top to bottom, left to right. Group words together as a sentence. Book reviews for disruptive minds. We got a great book this past week and a great interview with the author coming up on a future episode of the program. No Filter, the Inside Story of Instagram by Sarah Fryer. Sarah currently writes for Bloomberg all about social media. And we were able to fly through the advanced proof. And here's our quick hot take. Instagram was the anti-Facebook until Facebook did everything in its power to own it. The culture, the creators, the staff, nothing like how Facebook operated until it became Facebook. In fact, Instagram is the main driver for Facebook and has become a bed of activity for influencers, commerce, lifestyles, and snake oil salespeople. While Instagram has created a new economy of influence that helps build brands, it also has created a world of fakery that has led to Fire Festival. But the real tale of the book is when I read it, I realized quickly that Instagram isn't so much a microscope on how our society acts and behaves as much as a mirror reflecting and revealing our desire for perfection, our inability from no longer being able to escape from living in public, and that we've entered a dark world where business performance is no longer based on purchasing, but rather something more vapid, our attention. Five out of five stars. It's out April 14th on Simon & Schuster, wherever fine books are sold. Okay, here are a few stories that are starting to create some buzz, and we think you should pay closer attention to. It's a segment we call On the Radar. Here's what's on our radar. Here's what's on our radar. Number one. With companies asking workers to forsake work travel and holiday makers increasingly ditching vacation plans, airlines, as well as the nation's airports, are feeling vulnerable to the coronavirus's economic impact. Takings are down by up to 70% at U.S. duty-free stores and other airport shops as these havens of high-end shopping struggle to cope with plummeting foot traffic. U.S. airlines like JetBlue, Delta, and American are also countering a precipitous decline in bookings by waiving change fees and allowing cancellations on tickets purchased this month. Number two. Once written off as a dying business defeated by a combination of greed and piracy, the music industry's big three record labels are now racking up about $1 million in revenue per hour. The return to profitability at Sony, Universal, and Warner stems from surging revenues from streamers such as Spotify and Apple Music. Recorded music sales hit $11.1 billion last year, a jump of 13% from the previous year. Streaming now accounts for 80% of that money, as Americans stream more than 1.5 trillion songs annually. 
number three. Apple tentatively agreed to pay up to $500 million to settle a suit accusing it of throttling for slowing down older iPhone models to induce customers to upgrade. It comes to $25 a phone for U.S. owners of qualifying iPhone models 6 and 7. The tech giant, which admitted no wrongdoing, said the slowdown of phones occurred as a result of temperature changes, high usage, and other issues. Okay, that's going to do it for DFM episode 62. Big thanks to our guest Rick Farman of Superfly. Next week, we speak with Danielle Wiley, talking about how brand marketing and political marketing intersect. As always, thank you for your time and attention. Help us out in our quest for world domination. You can rate, review, and subscribe to the show. We're on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora. One more time, the socials, Twitter and Instagram, at Disruptive FM. And of course, check out cool content from our sponsors at MicrosoftAdvertising.ai, BrainingStrategyInsider.com, and Iographer.com. Until next time, from everyone here at DFM, I'm Jeffrey Cologne. Make sure to wash your hands with soap and water, please. And we'll catch you next week. You've been listening to Disruptive FM with Microsoft Communications designer Jeffrey Cologne. All thoughts are his own. Disruptive FM is produced in Los Angeles by Feeler Media. 